Hey everyone, how's it going and welcome to another week of TCG News. As always, before we get started, if you guys are looking for Force Will singles or sealed product, including pre-orders for the next cluster worth of sets, be sure to visit the link in the description below for Happy Little Hug Factory. We'll go into more details on some of that later in the news, but uh, once again, I want to stress to make sure you use that link in the description below so they know we sent you over. It really helps support the channel and lets them know that uh, we're super cool. Also brought to you by Play DKP Accessories and their magnetic playmat. Uh, just visit their website at Play DKP Accessories. I have a link for that in the description and use code TCG for 5% of your off your order of a magnetic playmat so you can play cards on the go, outside, at your locals without stuff sliding about. It's really awesome and I highly recommend checking that out. So we got two weeks worth of news to go over, a lot of Force Wheel stuff obviously, and then we got some Chrono Clash stuff at the very end. And so we'll, we'll jump right into this. So the first big thing is this set being released. So we're gonna have a, we're just gonna talk about the set being released here in a big old section. So uh, strap yourselves in. First up was the pre-release happened. So pre-release uh, was a mixed bag it looks like. This had probably the biggest sort of mixed reaction from people of, of any pre-release in Force Wheel history. I would, I would say it's pretty okay to say. Uh, the the reaction from people is due in part because of things like the reprints. So people weren't sure what to do with the runes, and so a lot of people ended up adopting house rules of making the runes playable as rune chants inside of your deck, uh, among other things, and making other and moving some other cards around. This sounds like it was able to help in some cases. In other cases, it still didn't make too much of a difference because uh, the set was just hard to play with those reprints and runes and the low pull rate of the new cards made for a little bit of a lackluster uh, release from the sounds of it. I unfortunately was not able to attend pre-release, but from everyone that I've seen comment on Facebook and uh, that I've talked to, it sounds like it was not the most exciting event ever. <laughs> but moving on to the main release of the set, so the set released last week, and it was uh, pretty interesting, uh, uh, if you guys have been following it at all, but we'll break some of it down and along with some uh, new information. So uh, during the pre-release, it's important to note that everyone got their pre-release kits. There was never any issues. I think you can still go get some pre-release kits because there was some extra. So that was all good. But when the actual set release came around, a lot of people were shorted. It sounds like a lot of players who had pre-ordered weren't getting the pre-orders straight up or significantly less. Local game stores that had pre-ordered got entire cases cut off from it, and among other things, uh, and uh, some people would claim to have as much as 80% of the product they ordered cut off. You can check out where we go into some of the detail on that uh, in a video we released on this channel, and we go uh, have sort of a discussion go into some of the details, but I'll summarize some of that as well as some of the new stuff. But it's um, almost impossible to figure out the root cause of why this product was shorted, a part of it is due to you know distributors aren't going to lay the blame on themselves and force will isn't going to talk i guess ever <laughs> we still haven't heard back from them from the q a from what is it two months now i think uh and i would say 90 percent of that q a is completely irrelevant now so it doesn't even matter but i uh, it's safe to say even to defend themselves i don't think we'll hear from force will but in the US, the main distributor that people were having problems with, it sounds like, was GTS Distribution. And then I'm not sure the names of the distributors, but it sounds like in Germany there for sure was problems with pre-orders allotments not being fulfilled, and possibly New Zealand. There was um, problems in other countries with players not getting product, but it sounds like it's not getting product after the pre-orders were met. So it's just no extra product was sent to them, it sounds like. Whereas other places like you, the US with GTS and uh, possibly Germany and stuff like that straight up did not receive all of their pre-order allotments, which is kind of a big deal. Uh, Rudy of Alpha Investments actually made a video, if you guys want to go check it out, talking about this for Force of Will, where he uh, uh, thought that maybe it was something intentionally done by the company in order to put up the uh, product at a higher value or something like that, but obviously he's not sure. He, uh, in a message, we asked him and in a message to us, he said his pre-orders from the set went from 120 to 60, then 30, and finally when he finally got the product, it was 12 boxes at the end of the day. He said, Force of Will, as far as he's aware, literally, literally made the exact number for pre-orders and nothing more usually. Force of Will prints for pre-orders plus about 10%, but it looks like they just did pre-orders this time. And he speculates maybe 
uh, that some of the product maybe got lost or damaged, which was what I was thinking as well, which would result in uh, the, the large loss in allotment, especially if it was allotment specifically for GTS. That would explain why that was gone. But it also wouldn't fully explain why th places like Germany and stuff might be having pre-orders go down a bit. Unfortunately, the biggest takeaway here is that if you want product, you got to make sure to pre-order it and not just regular pre-order it. You have to make sure you pre-order it very far ahead of time. So if you're watching this video now, you want to pre-order probably before September 11th, I think, is possibly when the deadline is for distributors to place their pre-orders, which is the pre-order date you want to look for. Um, and this means you're going to be pre-ordering product without actually seeing it, without seeing what any of the spoilers or anything like that are. Uh, which kind of sucks, but if Forcewood doesn't print extra product again, we're, we're going to run into the same problem and there's going to be no way also for new players to get a hold of product. Currently the new booster box, the people that have it in stock, it, it's, as of right now I saw them going for about $158 per box now and obviously single prices are uh, pretty high across the board as well due to this and among other factors as well. So definitely make sure to pre-order. Um, if you want to do that. I personally don't pre-order usually and uh, I probably still won't but uh, you know if you are able to I would highly recommend doing it and you can actually do it right now. Um, Happy Little Hug Factory already pre-ordered a very large allotment so once again go over to their website where you can pre-order the next set uh, everything re related to the next set uh, for extremely cheap and they they got over 200 boxes I believe so there's a, a very strong cushion there and you just want to make sure you're in that cushion of what they're getting to guarantee your product. Moving on to other notes from the release of this new set is that secret rares are not in it. Uh, whether this will be a continuing trend for the foreseeable future or not, we don't know, but it was replaced by a second god pack since in this set we had 20 super rares instead of 10. So one god pack is literally 10 high gods and the other 10 or the other god pack is the remaining 10. So uh, that's just one interesting note. Also, the, we noted this in our box opening, but the print quality of the set is actually super good. It's some of the best, I think, that the, the company has ever done. It, the texturing feels really nice, foiling looks super good, and the print quality as far as the coloring seems to be pretty universally good. There was a couple off ones, but it isn't too bad, as well as there isn't that sort of grimy feel on the cards as well, which Oscar's really happy about, so really happy about the print quality at least. Inside the booster box, one. Uh, an important thing to note is inside of that little box that has your stones and draft rulers in the back of that it also has tokens it comes with two moon edition tokens as well as two cat tokens so that's cool that they finally decided to print those again that's going to be very helpful especially for isis players uh, they used art for the moon token from alice custer i believe and the cat token is art from a caster chronicles board game type thing i, I forget exactly what it was or some sort of crossover but it was pretty interesting. I'm not a big fan of that art. I don't think it matches Force of Will at all, but at least it's something. They're not double-sided, which is a bit unfortunate, but I'm going to assume maybe the printer can't, couldn't do for double-sided, maybe, but, or it's just expensive. Also, uh, a side note is the Kaguya Buy 2 Box promo. Looks like it was delayed for some people, depending on the distributor. I'm not sure if it was, uh, what distributor it was. It might have been Southern Hobby, if I remember right. I don't know if it was with other distributors as well, but if you're getting boxes, just make sure to check back in and make sure you get the buy two box promo. I know Happy Little Hug Factory is gonna be sending those out if they haven't already, so make sure to keep a lookout for that. It'll be coming separate separate from the box. But hopefully everyone gets their allotment of buy two box promo and the distributors don't hoard some of them like they have done in the past. Hopefully that's all the main release uh, points for this new set. I hope I covered everything, but yeah, we'll move on to the next topic. So next up, we'll talk about errata. So uh, this is something that is gonna be specific for two cards we'll talk about, which is Lucifer and uh, Ugarda Loki. So both of these cards in English, uh, Lucifer says that when you uh, lose life, you gain it back at the end of the turn. In other languages, uh, not all, but some, I think it's one or two other languages, it says if you lose or pay life, you gain that back at the end of the turn. Obviously, that is a huge difference with a huge, you know, game uh, mechanic changes. So it would be important to know which one of those is correct. Uh, we don't, I don't, there's not any official ruling. And I don't think there's been a community ruling yet, but it's something that we'll have to figure out, obviously, before Worlds at minimum. 
the big one we'll talk about is Ugardi Loki, which uh, currently in English and uh, most languages, I think it says for the ability where you pay three, it does the discard a card and you lose 400 life. And currently that's all it does, but in other languages, or at least once again, a couple other languages, it also destroys a J slash resonator as an extra ability on that. Now, setting aside that I think that's a possibly a really, really strong mechanic to add onto it, possibly too strong. Uh, it's something that is, once again, very game changing. It's important to know which version we should use. And since the company isn't officially releasing errata, at least at this point in time, it looks like the community is adopting an errata. This started, I think, from what we can understand in Australia with, I'm not sure who, I assume just a random group of players. Uh, to make it so that the version where it destroys is the version that people use and so people in the US are adopting that. This is problematic for a couple reasons. Obviously, I personally think the power level might be too high, but outside of that, uh, you have a problem where it's going to be kind of confusing on what exactly to do. So you, from this point on, you're going to have to check every event, every local interaction you do to see what the uh, rule set they're going by is are they going by that sort of community adopted errata or not new players who are getting into the game are just going to see the card as it is and not going to even question whether there should or shouldn't be an errata and since this is not an official company errata there's no way for them to find out because uh, they go to the website and there won't be anything on there if they go to the official force of will page there won't be anything on there contrary to what people might realize majority of people aren't in the force of will global group they're going to follow the main force of will page maybe if they're even on facebook or check the main website so how are they going to find out about this errata outside of maybe word of mouth or if they're in the global group and even then trying to explain to someone like say a new player who pulled it how it's supposed to work is going to maybe be not too convincing to a player that Oh no, it's it, it's errata because if you join the Facebook global, global group, some people in the community uh, think that it should be this way. So that's how our locals decide to do it. It's going to be hard to sort of convey that information in a believable manner or in a consistent manner. And so, yeah, so the main takeaway is you're, for now, at least you're going to have to check every single event you go to to see what the errata is. Uh, one example is the Force of Will Festival coming up, uh, run by Ruler School. Uh, Jeremy said that they will be using the errata, so it will be able to destroy a J slash Resonator in addition to Quick Cast Tisk card. So it's good that he was able to get that information out, really, so at least you can play a test for it. But, uh, you know, entire decks are going to completely change back and forth depending on the event and player's knowledge. So this, I think, is is a could potentially be a more bigger problem or at least a more annoying problem than people realize trying to do an errata without official uh, company sanctions on it but we'll wait and see how this ends up turning out and new circuit series was announced so uh, this is a new circuit series jeremy announced that is being done in partnership with vite ramen vite ramen if you remember they were the people who sponsored us to go stream the event in uh, or a wgpq oscar went and did that and it was really awesome and so it looks like they're doing an entire circuit uh, for Force of Will. More information for this will be coming out later, but the little details we do know, stores will be able to contact them at a later point to order kits for this. There will be exclusive top eight playmats for that are Vite Ramen playmats for top eight. And there is gonna be a nationals event at the end of this circuit for people who I assume got first place and stuff like that to attend. So looks like there's a huge giant plan in place. We That's all the details we know for now, but that's pretty exciting. The people at Vite Ramen were really awesome uh, to talk to and work with, so I'm really excited to see this. They're really passionate about Force of Will and building up the community, so I'm really glad to see that they're doing that here. The first official event for this will actually be Jeremy's event, uh, the Force of Will Grand Festival, which will be taking place October 12th in Michigan. You can check out the full details by going over to the Ruler School Facebook page where they have a link to that event. So uh, that'll be the first event for this, so that'll be exciting to follow. Moving on, the next set of Force of Will was announced. Actually, the officially uh, Alice Origins 1 and Alice Origins 2 was announced. We'll just go all over Alice Origins 1, obviously, because we have all the details for that. So the next cluster, like I said, is probably going to be called Alice Origins. Uh, the first set, it looks like it's going to have blue booster packs for the first time that I'm aware of in Force of Will history. Uh, for, for, 
full details were uh, given out for the set, or at least uh, uh, a lot of the details were given out. Take what you can from this because these are sell sheets and the new company now is, is pretty bad at making these, honestly. So we'll see what turns out correct and incorrect. But first is the next set comes out November. It officially is going to go from 36 booster packs in a booster box to 20. So we're gonna have smaller booster boxes now instead of the normal 36. So uh, that should be, I think, overall good for the game. I'm a little bit mixed on it, but it's still, uh, you know, it's not gonna hurt anything. So a lot of people are excited about that. The new price for this, at least uh, this price that Happy Little Hug Factory is selling it at is $48 a piece. Once again, you can check them out, uh, link in the description below. Uh, so that's roughly about 11 cents more per pack. So it's not too big of a price change overall as far as value, which is nice to see. The pre-release kit will have 60 picks, packs in it down for 72, which means less people will be able to play pre-release out of one kit. So you need to order more if you usually fill up one kit. Uh, hopefully the, the, the price of the pre-release kit will reflect this as well. Um, the order due date to place your order for the pre-release kit is by September 11th, and the release of it will be November 4th. There will be two star decks released as well, one for Faria, one for Melgus. As you can see, they're retreading that ground pretty hardcore. Uh, these are going to be 15 bucks each. Once again, you could pre-order those on Happy Little Hug Factory as well. Now, it's already up there. Um, they'll be releasing different star decks with each booster box throughout the cluster. Uh, we don't, we can, we're going to just have to assume they're not going to reprint them again. So once again, make sure you order, you and all your friends in local game store order lots of those on the pre-order sheet. Full card ratios were released for the next set. And it says that it will have 147 cards, including 29 normal cards, 19 rare, 19 super rare, 80 memorial, and basic magic stones. Star decks will have 61 cards, which will include one ruler card, two special magic stones at a place at each, a basic magic stone with whatever quantity that is, and a random five cards, and an unnamed additional card. So there's a couple things to break down with that information. First is the set size seems pretty big. Once again, we'll wait and see if the sell sheet is correct, but if that, I doubt that that number is correct, but even if it is, that's, that's, a, that's too big of a number for a set this small. Um, the second is the common, common and uncommon rarity is gone. Instead, it's replaced with this normal rarity. Uh, so that's super weird and interesting. Normal rarity, we'll see how that goes. Uh, uh, uncommon and uh, common cards, uh, you know, make up how pack ratios work. So I'm wondering if this will affect pack ratios. And I'm hoping it does because 19 super rares will be in this set. And so if the ratios stay the same, we're gonna run into a similar problem like we have now where super rares are very, very expensive, which is kind of annoying to build decks and stuff like that. And it also could lead to possibly high power levels with that many super rares in a set. Each set, rather than normal 10, super rares are higher power levels, so it could lead to large power spikes that, unless they sort of level things out after this set and things aren't quite as powerful as they are in this set, which I think would be a good thing overall. Lastly is Memorial cards. We have no idea what this is, but uh, my biggest fear is it sounds very close to what you might call reprints. So I'm really hoping we don't have reprints just in every set going forward. Maybe Memorial cards are just a cool new type of card, but 80 is a lot for a new type of card. So wait and see, but I'm a little bit nervous. So that's the new set. Like I mentioned, make sure to pre-order. Once again, I'm just gonna keep emphasizing that. Click the link in the description for Happy Little Hug Factory and, and pre-order as much as you possibly can for the starters and the set. Uh, we got some word on a possible CR update. So the CR usually comes a week before-ish pre-release. Obviously, we're a week after release and still don't have anything. So it's safe to say uh, we probably wouldn't get it for a while, but it looks like um, on a comment thread, at least two people, including Stephanie Shaw, said she has a contact with people in the know in the company and said that a CR will be coming, but sometime between now and October. So that's good because there's a lot of things that I think that need clarification in the CR. Uh, the best example is Alice Zeus Incarnate, both with her multiple different races on how exactly that works, how many get stacked. But also a question that was brought up is if she's in your side deck, does she still count as all races for things like bringing your giants into the field? So we'll have to wait and see. 
but hopefully we get that sooner rather than later. Whether we get erratas as well, I think is up in the air. Hopefully we do, but I think it's safe to say we won't get any bans probably, uh, update to a ban list probably ever again. So yeah, a weird thing came up, which was a poster came out for this set, a decisive battle of Valhalla, which already is, uh, is kind of weird for the past couple of sets. The poster comes out for the set that is already out rather than advertising the next set. So that's kind of weird already, but so this set finally came in for a DVD and at the bottom of it, I had an advertisement for a game called Cesspool. So already, already this is kind of weird because it feels like the company doesn't even want to dedicate a full poster to Force of Will now. But secondly, as you can tell by the name, Cesspool is, sounds kind of weird. Going by the description on the poster, it says you enter the city of immorality where you do crime management, a crime management simulator with a, the theme of narcotics, manufacturing, and smuggling. Um, and it's some type of board game. So if that doesn't get you excited for it, I, I, don't, I don't know what will. <laughs> it was uh, released in 2017 in Japan, so I can assume that iSpy probably bought the rights for it recently and are releasing it in the US now, so that's something to look forward to, I guess. <laughs> Moving on to Chrono Clash now, Godzilla spoilers started. So if you remember, a dump of Godzilla spoilers happened a while ago. But now it looks like they're doing this sporadic single spoiler now, which is pretty cool. They've already spoiled a couple of them, which I believe was, a, I think, the only one that I can remember off the top of my head was Godzilla Jr. from the High Sierra. So this is a pretty interesting. I'd highly recommend if you're on Facebook to go join the Chrono Clash Facebook because there's spoilers being released officially, some I think being given to content creators, and it's a sporadic release schedule. So best way is just to join the group to follow it. We won't be going doing videos following the spoilers, but we'll probably do a video once all the spoilers are released going over them. Uh, more on that in a sec. Another Chrono Clash announcement was a Naruto expansions. So this was pretty cool because a lot of people were worried that they were just gonna keep doing different IPs and not actually revisit any of the past ones. So this is pretty much a guarantee that that's not what they're doing. These are two different expansions for Naruto Baruto. Uh, they're smaller ones it looks like and obviously can work with the original game. So no other details were given or spoilers, but this is already pretty exciting and also gives me hope that Godzilla might be getting an expansion maybe one day. Uh, even though it's not, a, not even out yet, I already want an expansion for it. But uh, with that announcement of Naruto, they also announced that they will be reprinting the Naruto Burudo sets. So if you didn't get a hold of that, you'll be able to now as well as a new tournament kit, so to run more tournaments for it. So that's also exciting. Uh, on our end, we'll definitely be doing Chrono Clash content soon. I know we said that before, but we got sort of pushed behind on some of it. But keep an eye out for that. We got some cool stuff planned and some unique things, I think, as well. That uh, even if you don't follow Chrono Clash, you'll be interested in seeing those videos. So I recommend uh, sticking around and, and looking forward to those. So that's the past two weeks worth of news. Uh, thank you guys for sticking around for all that and we'll see you guys next week.